So this is my modded Razer Orochi V2. It looks stock on the outside but the magic is on the inside. So let's take a look at what's inside here. Be warned though, the image you'll see shortly might be unsettling. I made the first mods to this mouse long before I started filming videos, so that is why this video is like a showcase of the horrible things I've done to this mouse rather than a tutorial. I modded this mouse basically because it was too heavy with the AA or AAA batteries and the weight balance felt kinda off. I wanted to get this mouse to the below 60 gram range from the 74 grams or so and was intrigued about the wireless charging the Enco mod kit provides. Firstly, let's get over some specs of this mouse. The weight, stock weight of this mouse depends on what kind of batteries you use. You can use AAA or AA batteries and it can be kind of heavy with those. Uh, Razer has weirdly <laughs> listed its weight as 60 gram mouse but that doesn't include the batteries which is kind of weird thing to do. It is using Razer's custom Kale 4.0 switches and has a good 16,000 dpi sensor with a low latency and all around great wireless performance. You can also use this mouse in Bluetooth mode uh, if you want to use it with your laptop on the go or something. The stock skates are really good on this mouse and you don't have to remove them if you want to mod this mouse, if you want to open it up, uh, that is rare. That is really rare. I don't actually think there's a coating on this mouse. It's kind of like a roughened plastic, which in my hand feels kind of slippery. So I've installed some hotline grips to the mouse buttons, which helps a bit. The shape is a really small egg shape, uh, which some people like very much. It has a deep thumb group on the left and slight slopes on mouse 1 and mouse 2. As you can see, next to the Dave, it looks tiny. The shape is probably most suited for fingertip grip, but I can claw it pretty easily. If you have small hands, you could also palm grip it. Probably the most critique thing about this mouse is the really forward sensor position. It makes your aim feel extra sensitive and maybe something you need to adjust for a longish period of time. It is because while this is so much forward, the same wrist movements makes your in-game cursor move more than, for example, with a lower sensor precision G303 Shroud Edition. This is also the main reason I've not been using this mouse more, since I like to change the mouse I use around quite a bit. But if you don't want to use many mice and want to stick to one particular mouse, I think the aiming potential with the Orochi V2 is really high. So let's start with the main mod, rechargeable battery mod. I'm using here the Enco battery mod kit with the wireless charging. It is rather simple to install and requires no soldering. The hardest part was to separate two pins from a JST connector, but honestly it is it is not hard. Uh, then you just install them to another JST connector and then it's like building Lego bricks. Really easy. This right here is the induction coil which handles the wireless charging. I just attached it with some double-sided tape which comes uh, with the mod kit. You could also use a USB rechargeable battery or even resource the charging circuit from one if you are handy. It is quite dangerous though so to clarify I don't recommend doing so. Easiest way of going about this is to do a coin shell battery mod which means in its easier form to tape the plus and minus cores from the battery connectors to appropriate sites of a coin shell battery and attach it somewhere inside the mouse but it wouldn't be rechargeable sadly. The stock switches, the modified KLGM 4s on this mouse are exceptionally good for stock switches but a little bit too harsh for my liking. So I decided to swap them for Huano blue shell pink dots which I like really much. The mouse wheel is also a bit stiff so I also looped it with Crytox 205 grade 0 and it made a small difference. The notches are still very pronounced but scrolling is somewhat lighter now. But then we get to the gore part. You might be thinking what the hell happened here? So yeah after I was done with those mods I probably should have just cut away the battery holder but I decided to channel my inner bearded bob and got a bit carried away. After cutting I realized the weight reduction was so minor that it wasn't worth risking the structural integrity of the mouse. But hey, 
here we are. The final weight with the mods is around 58 grams. So if you wanna do any plastic cutting, stick to the battery part is what I would recommend. Any extra, you introduce some extra creaking and since the top cover is held by two magnets, it can pop off with too much side weight force if you have damaged the structural integrity of the mouse. It doesn't make this mouse unusable, but it's quite annoying. Also, the wireless charging is not as handy as I imagined. None of my wireless chargers were able to connect with the mouse, so I needed to remove the plastic cover on one of my chargers to get a solid connection to be able to recharge the mouse. Easy and simple, right? So, is it worth it? Is it worth to mod this mouse. I'd say not anymore, since if you want a similar shape with better specs and for the same price, just get the Fandec Aria. It has a better sensor, it is already rechargeable and comes with all sorts of goodies. But if you already own an Orochi V2 and want to stick with it for a little longer, it is in fact a good mouse to mod. Just hold your horses with the plastic cutting and maybe learn from my mistakes. I will link the Enco Mod Kit guide in the description and from that website you can also purchase the mod kit. I don't know the current lead times with the orders but uh, last time I ordered from there it took me like three months to the mod kit to arrive. So yeah, keep that in mind if you order from there. But yeah, that's it for the video. Like and subscribe if you want to see more of my content. And see you on the next one. Goodbye.